Hello everyone, welcome back. On the episode today, we are going to talk about CVT, CVT transmission. Everybody has been talking about CVT, uh, CVT failing, and so on. So, what is a CVT transmission? First of all, CVT transmission, CVT is just an abbreviation of continuous velocity transmission. So, a normal automatic transmission um, is a sort of transmission that shifts gear, gears by itself uh, using a computer a transmission control module uh, that will help you shift gear ratios let's say from first second third um, and above or shift from the highest gear ratio to the lowest uh, but then cvt um, sometimes it's called a single shift transmission so you don't have actual gear shifts instead what you have is you have two pulleys a bigger pulley and a smaller pulley that will vary the gear ratios interconnected by the use of a belt or a chain so you'll have the cvt belt or the cvt chain so how the ratios change this pulley uh, these two pulleys the gear ratios will vary in between them depending on the positioning of the belt so if the belt moves from one end of the smaller pulley towards the other end of the bigger pulley this is how the gear ratios will vary this is all dependent on your engine speed so as much as you gain uh, engine revolutions, as the revs go up, uh, the ratio also goes up. The positioning of the belt uh, goes uh, changes, and that's how uh, sort of the ratios change. But in the real sense, CVTs do not have actual gear teeth that would change ratios by moving from one gear to the other, as opposed to the traditional automatic gearbox transmission that has the planetary gear system uh, that will shift uh, gears in between. So you have a set of gears uh, as well as a set of clutch plates, uh, let's say like two per gear, that will help you shift gears. So uh, CVT does not really have that. So why do manufacturers use CVT? Manufacturers nowadays, especially JDM cars, they use CVT because CVT is um, it's light, uh, that is weight reduction. Also, CVT is um, very efficient. So CVT uh, doesn't allow a lot of power loss in terms of power delivery transfer from the engine transmission onto the ground. So CVT ends up being efficient. So the main reasons for the main, the two main reasons for manufacturers using CVT is one, uh, it's light, and then it's simple to make uh, as well as cheap. And then two, CVTs are very efficient, thus very economical. This is why you will find CVTs only in small passenger cars. For example, you will find them in small cars like Toyota Yaris, Vits, you will find them in Premios, you will find them in Nissans, uh, up to the um, small crossover SUVs. But then when you move into the next bracket of um, full-size SUVs, you will never find that size of a car using CVT. Uh, reason for that is what takes us to the disadvantages of CVT. So number one, uh, disadvantage for CVT number one is uh, CVTs do break. That is the biggest disadvantage. It doesn't last as long as the traditional um, transmission or the tra traditional automatic transmission or the manual transmission. Why does CVT break? Things you need to do or things you shouldn't do with a CVT to help you save your CVT's life. So number one, if you have a car fitted with a CV CVT transmission, and how do you know that your car is fitted with CVT? Uh, just simple. Uh, if your car has a rev counter, you can watch the revs as they go up. If you notice that your revs, when the car shifts gears, the revs lower a bit and then start coming up, then you have a normal automatic transmission. But for CVTs, you will not notice that. When you drive that car, you'll just see your revs going up and up and up and up. They will never come down unless you lift off from the throttle. Then that, uh, you have a CVT. So, things not to do in a CVT for your CVT to last long. Number one, do not get used to racing your car at all. CVTs have never been made for uh, race cars or truck cars. Because when you flow your car, 
you put a lot of stress on your CVT transmission and because this is just a pulley and another pulley interconnected by a belt and this belt does not have any teeth to hook onto so chances of this belt slipping are quite high when you keep flooring your car so number one your car that has a CVT is not a race car do not floor it do not race other people on the road this goes to the Subaru gang uh, those people who like racing in between lights or back roads do not do that with your Impreza that has a CVT number two do not uh, roll back your car and then engage uh, gears when the car is still in motion uh, this is to say when you want to change direction you've just reversed and then you want to go forward you've made a turn make sure you come to a complete stop before you you change gears this is also for the reason that cvt using that belt and that belt not having any teeth chances of the belt slipping are quite high when you move from one direction to the other when you move from reverse to forward to drive without having your car um, at a complete stop because when your car is rolling back then you engage reverse that means the whole weight of the entire car is going to that belt because that belt is going to drive you uh, forward when you are rolling back so the entire weight of the car is just held by that belt that has no teeth to grab onto and that is how the belt will slip and that is how you will start issues with um, CVT number three what you want to do with your CVT is you do not overload your car once you've noticed or once you've made sure your car has a CVT do not overload your car again this puts a lot of pressure on that belt CVT is all about that belt that belt is what drives your transmission that belt is what transfers the power onto the ground so do not overload that car you risk overheating the transmission you risk the belt slipping so what happens with overheating is the temperatures in the transmission will rise higher than the optimum operating temperature and then definitely you will burn some clutch in it or you will just have the entire belt slipping or um, breaking the other thing is learn or keep warming up your car before uh, you go on to hard driving it so for example don't just switch on your car crank it jump in gear hard driving no let your car roll a bit as it warms up as much as the engine needs to come to operating temperature your transmission also needs to warm up so do not just floor your car after starting it up in the morning the other thing about the cvt transmission and probably the last thing that you would want to do to save your transmission is always keep up with the transmission service so the biggest problem people do especially in africa these cars come to Africa after they've been used, they are used units for let's say five years, been used in Japan. So when they come, the best thing to do is if you ship the car, find out if a full service was done. If not, start with your own full service, including the transmission. So do a gearbox flash, uh, change the filters. When you're doing a gearbox flash, the transmission oil is also a very sensitive fluid make sure you have the correct CVT fluid. For instance, if you're driving a Nissan or a Subaru, we have, or a Toyota, we have CVT transmission for Toyota. We have CVT transmission for Mazda and so on and so forth. The other difference that comes is we have CVT transmission fluids that are rated for uh, specific uh, transmissions that have specific ranges of torque. Let's say CVT transmission that is used in a small passenger car like a Demio or a Toyota Vitz uh, doesn't have the same properties like CVT transmission oil that is used in a Toyota Vanguard. There is a variance into these uh, two fluids. So make sure you visit a parts shop with your chassis number and also make sure that they give you the correct fluid for for your transmission that has come up from the search on your transmission on your car's chassis so if you do those things you take care of your transmission you'll never have problems 
Now, lastly, why do Nissan CVTs fail? For CVT to work, you also need to get to optimum temperature uh, for the transmission. For you to maintain that temperature, it means you need to have some cooling system. So in the event your transmission would uh, start uh, gaining temperature or temperature rising, you need to have a cooling system. So you need to have an oil cooler for your transmission. So why do Nissan CVTs fail? This is because the CVTs that were supplied to Nissan uh, from the year 2004 up to around 2013-14, uh, these transmissions came with um, a very small oil cooler for the transmission. That is a very small CVT cooling component. So a transmission also has an oil cooler just like um, an engine has a radiator that would hold uh, coolant. So the transmission fluid will flow into the, um, the cooler, get cooled and then back into the transmission. So Nissan transmissions have very small oil coolers uh, which makes which makes uh, the transmission overheat at some point. So when you overload your car or when you try to race your car or when you launch your car, do not launch a CVT. So when you do that, temperatures in your transmission will rise and then this leads to your transmission overheating and that uh, leads to uh, performance issues. That is how your CVT will start dying slowly by slowly. Yeah, so just a recap, do not launch your CVT, do not rest. Um, the other thing is make sure that you are on top of your oil changes. Uh, make sure you're using the correct transmission, uh, transmission oil, the correct CVT oil. Also, make sure you do not overload your car. And then also uh, just make sure your car is always taken care of by uh, warming up the, tr the transmission before you flow your car. So if you do all those things, if you notice you have a problem with your transmission overheating, the best thing to do is you go for aftermarket uh, CVT oil cooler that we have on these um, modern cars on the market. So it's something you can find on eBay, something you can find on um, um, Amazon. So buy an operated oil cooler, install on your car, especially for the Nissan guys. Buy an operated transmission oil cooler, mount it on your car. Some of them will be can be mounted uh, just uh, in front of the radiator or somewhere under your car, but it should be bigger than what you had as stock for better cooling, and that will save your CVT. I hope, guys, you've enjoyed learning about CVT and you know now how to take care of your CVT. So, if you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, watch it like and make sure you share with your friends so that uh, all of you can be updated whenever we post a video. Thank you.